we have finished the flash drafts of our essay about the character, about a character in Fox by Margaret Wilde. And now we are ready to move on to study something different about the book. We're going to shift our focus now to theme. And there's actually, there are many ways actually that you can determine the theme or the message of a text, but I'm going to teach you a different one than perhaps ones you're used to using. And the first step in determining theme would be to make a list of the life issues that appear in the story. Now, a life issue, okay, might be death, health, loss, friendship, family, coping with tough problems, marriage or divorce, depending on whether it's a good situation or not, love, fitting in. All of these are life issues, things that impact your life. All right, so thinking about our story, Fox, what are some of the life issues that appear in the text? What are some of the life issues that we're talking about? Lydia? Yeah. Say it again. Yeah. Loss, right? We're thinking about loss. Specifically, we're thinking about the loss of dog's eye, and we're thinking about the loss of, of the wing of the bird. Now, let's, let's kind of make a connection, because remember that theme is something we can use, right? Theme is a message that we can apply to our life. That's a universal message that all people could apply to their life. So in this case, we have animals. So how can we transfer that burnt wing and that lost eye to people? What would we call it? What would we call it, Levi? Okay, being blind in one eye and not having an arm, right? What would we call that? What, what, what term would we call that? Fiona? An injury. Say it again. An injury. It is an injury, but there's another word that's a little bit more precise. Harper? A disability, right? So one of the things, one of the life issues... is a disability. What about another one? Is there another life issue that comes up in our story, Isabella? Friendship. friendship. Okay. So friendship is a life issue. Eli, I'd like you to stop that, please, and engage in the lesson. Okay, what about anything else? Any other life issue that seems to appear in our story? You mean like it towards the end? Like I'm not sure whether I would consider that like part of friendship. I'm wondering if that might be this might be similar. Preston? Pardon me? Separation. Carolyn, is that what you're going to say? Okay. Uh, separation. Okay, so we, we talked. Bird. The bird has a burnt wing, dog has a blind eye, but what about fox? What about fox? What would you say about fox? Caroline? He has that loneliness. What, what are some of the thing, ways that they described fox in the text that stick with us? Paige?
smells of angry, anger, envy, loneliness. Anything else that we see? Donovan? Haunted eyes, right? So I'm wondering if we shouldn't also include that in a disability because there, there are two types of disabilities, right? We have physical disabilities, losing a limb, right? And then we have emotional or mental disabilities where people's Brain might not uh, process things in the same way as other people do. Or something terrible has happened to them that has affected their emotions. And we can infer that that is probably what happened with Fox because it talks about his eyes are haunted. Like something terrible has happened that he has not overcome. Something that is making him envious, angry, feeling lonely. And you could probably even infer what it was that happened. He probably had a situation where he was in a relationship similar to Dog and, and uh, Magpie's relationship. And for some reason, it's no longer there. So he's also suffering from a loss, except... His loss is not physical, right? It has affected him emotionally. Okay, so that's the first step. The first step is listing the life issues, but that's not the theme, okay? The next step would be to ask yourself, what is the author saying about this? life issue. So that's your next question. So when we look at disabilities, both physical and emotional, is Margaret Wilde saying something about that? Is she giving us a message? Isabella? All right, say it again. Okay, so I think I'm getting, I think I'm getting what, what she's saying. What I think that it was, Isabella is saying is, is that it's very difficult to accept loss or disability when it first happens, but over time, we come to realize that life can still be good, right? Okay, so if we, if we put it in those terms, we can all take that message ourselves and apply it to our life, right? So when something bad happens, so like a disability, we could also say a loss, disability, loss, I'm going to make sure that that's disabilities or losses are difficult to accept when they first happen. But over time, we can come to see that. And I'm going to use life is still good. Okay, so disabilities or losses, they're difficult to accept when they first happen. But over time, but over time, we can come to see that life is still good, okay? Now, once we, once we look at the message, our next step is then to ask ourselves, 
can we find evidence to support this across the text? Can we find evidence across the text, or is it in one place? So where could we find evidence in our text to support this message that disabilities or losses are difficult to accept when they first happen, but over time we can come to see that life is still good? Trinity? <laughs> Okay, so we have dog, and he obviously, his injury, his loss, his disability occurred a while ago because he's already come to see that life is still good. So that's one place. Give me another place. Dylan? Um, when Magpie lost her wing, but over time when he spends time with the dog, he, he um, finally calmed down about her wing, and they become two best friends, like... How Magpie helps uh, see, uh, like see it better, and, and thoughts helps Magpie live. Okay, so we have we have it in the, both in the beginning where we have the two contrasting characters of Dog and Magpie. We have Dog, who seems to have come to accept. Would you put that away, please, Eli? Seems to have come to accept the fact that he is blind in one eye. And we can contrast that at the beginning also, where Magpie is very struck with her grief. She's having a hard time accepting it. And then Dylan just offered, in the middle of the story, we see that, uh, that Dog and Magpie have kind of come together and formed a friendship that over time she seems to be accepting that life can still be good, even with only one wing. All right, any other place? Any other place we can see that? What about Fox? Do you think Fox's loss or, you know, disability occurred a long time ago, or do you think it, it occurred recently? Paige? It probably occurred recently, right? How do we know that, Isabella? Oh, okay. Well, you know what? That's also an idea that I think you could probably, you could probably um, float that idea. Did everybody hear that? Paige said it probably happened recently because he hasn't gotten over it. But Isabella said, well, I think it could have happened a long time ago. He just hasn't have found a way to accept it. Why? What does... What does Magpie have that Fox doesn't that helps him to get get through that and come to accept it? Amelia? Um, okay, so I would definitely say we could support that idea that Fox could have had his his problem occur a long time ago. Haunted, that word haunted kind of almost makes it that, that that's possible. But because Fox does not have somebody with him to help him to come to accept that, right? He doesn't have a friend like Dog and Magpie become. He has not come to accept it. So I, th I think that's a really good point. That's a really good idea. Okay, so definitely this theme passes the test because, number one, it's a message that we can all use, right? We can all use this message, but also that we can get it, support it with evidence throughout the story, across the text. Okay, so let's move on to friendship. Is Margaret Wilde giving us a message about friendship? Harper? Yes. Yes, what is the message? Levi? Say that again? Well, I don't know if I would say you can always trust a friend because Magpie left dog, right? Magpie left dog. Okay, so I'm not sure that that is going to be the best one. Nick, what do you think? Um, 
Remember, when we're growing ideas and we're growing interpretations, if we can back it up with evidence, it's a correct answer. Josh, what do you think? somebody else to come up with an answer. Nick? Pardon me? Well, that's true, but I think it's a little bit more than that. Of that. I think Margaret Watt was saying something a little bit more than that. Isabella? Remember, we're talking about friendship here. So what could she be saying about friendship? What? Well, I don't know. Dog trusted Magpie, and she left. So I'm not sure if trust is. Yes, but I know. But I don't know that trust is the message that Margaret Wilde is giving about friendship. Caroline? Okay, did y'all hear that? Oh, she said friends can help you to overcome things. And I would only change a little bit about that. I would say friends can get you through tough times. Okay, so once we have a theme, we need to test it. Can we support this theme with evidence from across the text? We can find. Can we support this theme with evidence from across the entire text? Yes, we can. All right, give me some evidence that you would use to support uh, the theme. Window. Okay, so the whole idea of dog and magpie working together, right? Because she is, because she just has that burnt wing and he's blinding one eye and they're helping each other. Okay, that's an example. Another one, Levi? Okay, so do we have all of that evidence at the beginning where dog is always trying to help her physically and emotionally 
to kind of accept that. That's another piece of evidence. All right, I, I need to see some other people participating so that I know you're thinking. Tristan? Okay, so we can pull that evidence about the difference between Fox and Magpie. Magpie has a friend to help her. Fox does not. We can see at the end, especially, that Magpie has come to accept her injury and she's going to do everything she can to make her way back to Dog because she's not thinking about herself anymore. She's thinking about him. Okay. All right. So I think that we can probably get plenty of text evidence to support this across the entire, across the entire text. Okay, what about the idea of separation? Is Margaret Wilde giving us a message about separation? Dylan, what do you think? I think she's giving, yes, she is. What is the message she's giving us about separation? Um. Hmm. Connor, can you help him out? Separation can lead to bad things. Sometimes. Okay, anybody else have a different one? Riley? where she comes to start thinking about him before herself, okay? But here's the test. Can we find evidence in more than one place in the text to support that theme? No, we can't, right? So we have to conclude that even though separation is an issue in this book, even though we can say, there is a lesson that can be learned from that. We don't have enough evidence across the text to support it, okay? So that's the test. That's the test that we have. So we have, and th these are just examples, we have two different types. We have two different examples of themes. How do we know which one is correct? How do we know which one is correct? Isabella? The ones that has more evidence, you're saying? Okay, what do you think, Amelia? Okay, the one that more people can relate to. Anybody else? you to consider the possibility that they are both correct. Because, let me tell you that, a fourth grade 
grade reader and a fifth grade reader, as we're moving beyond the third grade and we're moving to more complex text, guess what? They have more than one theme. Okay? And a skilled reader, when working with complex text, is going to see more than one theme. Okay. So we can see that. And these are just, this is just one way for you to word it. It's, it doesn't have to be written exactly like this. But you can see that we have two messages coming from our book box.